Hey guys, Trickshop here. Today I want to do a video teaching you how to play Lee Sin like one of, if not the best, in the world. Those of you who've been keeping up to date with my climb in ranked this season, you'll know that Lee Sin has been one of my most played champions, and of course you guys probably know by now too that he's one of my favourite champions. Now I'm always looking for ways to improve, after all, how else are you going to climb in the ranking? And for me, my Lee Sin I felt like was decent, but I was kind of missing a few things. So I've been stalking some good players and seeing if I can pick up some things from how they play and take it into my game. So today we'll be taking a look at how Peanut plays Lee Sin. For those of you who don't know who Peanut is, despite having a name that would suggest that some people are deathly allergic to him, he's actually a very good jungler. He's arguably one of the best junglers in the world. He previously played for Rock's Tigers and since they disbanded, and the fact that he was so good and shone so brightly, SKT, the defending world champions, have decided to pick him up and he's now their starting jungler. And outside of that, he's currently rank 1 in Korea, sitting at the very top of the challenger solo queue ladder, with a 70% win rate on Lee Sin. If that win percentage by itself doesn't sound too impressive, for context that would put him statistically as arguably the best Lee Sin player in Korea. So with all that said, I think this guy is a fairly good person for us to be taking notes from. In this video today, I want to delve really in depth into the more quantifiable aspects of Peanuts Lee Sin, specifically like his loadout, so his item build, his runes, his masteries. Because like, I don't know about you guys, but for me, I always kind of struggle about knowing when to go damage on Lee Sin, when to go tank on Lee Sin, what kind of damage items I should go for, what kind of defensive items I should go for. Lee Sin, being a versatile champion, has all the upsides of that, but also on the downside, it can just be a little bit confusing. You don't really know necessarily what to build, what to go for. And the primary reason why I wanted to make this video is because Peanut does something very similar in almost every single one of his games, so it makes it a lot easier for us to follow and easy for us to decide what is the best item build for us to be taking when we're playing Lee Sin in solo queue. So first things first, you want to get sorted before you even head out onto the rift with your runes and your masteries. Peanut goes AD reds, health per level yellows, 6 attack speed blues, 3 MR per level blues, and attack speed quints. If you don't have a lot of IP and you can't afford the same room page, then just take like an AD page, AD rares, AD quints, army lows, and whatever blues. For his masteries, he takes a very standard page here, going 12, 18, 0 with Thunderlord's decree, as you're seeing on the screen now. So let's move on now to the part of the video that you guys are really interested in, Peanuts Miracle Lee Sin Jungle Build. First thing to say is that this build starts off like a conservative Christian's sex life. It's very vanilla. Peanut rushes the green smite with the warrior enchant, prioritizing the long swords, the tracker's knife, and then the warhammer. And at this point, this is where things can get a little bit confusing for Lee Sin in general, because some people go Tiamat, some people will rush Black Cleave at this point, other people go full tank. Peanut, on the other hand, he will always rush a Hex Drinker here. After the Hex Drinker, Peanut will go for his tier 2 boots, and these are pretty much the most game dependent part of his build. We either get Ninja Tabby, Merc Treads, or Swifties, depending on the game. After that, he goes for Dead Man's Plate, prioritizing the Giant's Belt, and then the Chain Vest after that. And after the Dead Man's Plate is completed, he goes back to his Hex Drinker and upgrades it to the Maw of Mamortius. So just as a bit of a recap as to what Peanut's inventory looks like at this stage, he's got his green smite with warrior enchant, he's got tier 2 boots, he's got dead man's plate, and finally he has his more up Mamortius. And that's pretty much the core of the build, that's what Peanut gets almost every single game, and outside of that he rounds off his build with standard tank items. Things like Randwins or GA. Now there are a few things that I picked up when watching Peanut and looking at the builds that he goes, and these are the kind of things that I just want to address here to give you a bit more information. First thing to say is that every now and then Peanut actually gets a bit of health before he even completes the Hex Drinker, either the Ruby Crystal or sometimes even getting the full Giant's Belt. He'll still complete the Hex Drinker after getting this health, but sometimes I guess he just wants a bit of early tankiness. The second point, and this is probably the biggest question that you guys will have, and certainly was at least for me, Peanut does complete this more regardless of the enemy team comp. There was a game when the only AP threat on the enemy team was a Talia mid lane, and he still went this build with more Malmortius. There was another game where he was against Jace top lane, Graze in the jungle, Caitlyn bot lane, and the only AP was Syndra mid, and he still went for more Malmortius. So yeah, he definitely puts a lot of emphasis on finishing that more. Thirdly, when he's against a full AD comp, which is extremely rare in Korea because people draft a little bit better than they do over here, and also I think, or at least I've heard, that people People tend to rage and open mid if you do draft a full AD team. Either way, when he's against a full AD team, he will completely skip the Hex Drinker and just 
totally stack armor. Fourthly, and this was something I found very peculiar, he almost never goes Moby Boots. I could only find one game where he bought Moby Boots. And this was extra surprising for me because Moby Boots have actually been on the rise in general for junglers nowadays. A lot of people tend to get them, but not our boy Walnut. Next, Cashew frequently sells his refillable potion before the 10 minute mark to either finish his warrior enchant or to get boots. Basically, he'll never do it just to pocket a little bit of extra gold, but if by selling that refillable potion he could complete his warrior or get the tier 1 boots, he'll do it. On top of that, if our boy Almond ever finds himself falling behind, which by the way was extremely rare, I could only find one game where he was behind enough for him to actually alter his build, he'll not get Hex Shrinker first, he'll just go straight to the dead man's plate, then he actually gets it afterwards. He'll still get the extra Shrinker, just he won't rush it. And the last interesting point to note is that on average, Brazil's games were roughly between 20 minutes to 30 minutes long. And in those games, he would average around three control wards. So yeah, don't forget to buy control wards, boys. But anyway, that's all I want to say for this video, boys and girls. I hope you found it useful. I spent a decent amount of time researching things and I found it really interesting the way he was playing Lee Sin and I wanted to share that. Let me know what you thought about this video down below in the comments. Let me know if you thought it was helpful, if you thought it was kind of crap or if I didn't explain things well enough or if you still got some questions about the build. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it and also subscribe to me for more content just like this. But most importantly boys and girls thank you so much for watching you guys are awesome I love you all have a great day and I will see you in my next video.